Good day, Ron McFarland here, coming to you with a cybersecurity update for September 2nd, 2022. And by the way, not a coming to you from my home office, a bit messy, but I'll get it handled. <laughs> not a professional recording studio. Uh, just some notes on the presentation. First off, this information is for stu students, learners of cybersecurity, uh, whether you're in college, high school, or if you're just going for certification, catching up, learners of all ages as you will. So information gathered is from publicly available sources. There's no sensitive information presented. I'll add some commentary. So also in encourage you to post any comments in uh, the comments area in this YouTube. Content is presented for educational purposes. Only items presented here are for fair use. Uh, links to the content are presented for your further research and I have a references section at the end of this presentation as well I'll post it in the notes so if you're doing a research paper uh, some additional research or just an FYI if you're going to cite items please cite it per your university college or uh, your academic research institution whether it's an MLA or APA format I just provide the simple links work it from there Higher Vista is uh, an item I started a website gosh in the 90s only for educational purposes um, I, it's gone through several iterations but the bottom line is um, it's in progress right now I'm going to continue to post YouTube content some articles I've written regarding IT and cybersecurity and feel free to use it as a resource uh, for your research also feel free to share this presentation and if you will like it as well that way I can kind of gauge uh, if our community is enjoying this content as well post notes in the con comments I'll be responding to those again I am going to have limited editing on these videos maybe when when I really clobber something but other than that I will have uh, the usual glitches that I make in any kind of presentation so it's not going to be polished if you will uh, topics today seven topics US uh, has uh, AI export bans, we'll see that. Uh, second, even this operating system, Linux, isn't safe from hacks. Uh, third, police in the UK turn a map app, map, mapping app, Waze, uh, against speeders. I think it's kind of a tongue-in-cheek chuckle, if you will. Uh, fourth, uh, your next PC might come from in India instead of China. Uh, that's kind of speaking to the division we're seeing in the world. India stepping up to it. Uh, powerhouse Italian oil company is hit by a cyber attack. We'll look at that. NASA engineers execute software fixed on old software from 14 billion miles away. And seven, the split in the world. The tech exodus from Russia continues. So first off the bat, new US AI export ban uh, will further hamper Chinese efforts. And I'm kind of surprised it took this long, quite frankly. Uh, for the U.S. to step up on this ban, but uh, a U.S. order to ban exports of some advanced chips to China is likely to hit almost any major tech company running public clouds or advanced AI training modules in the, in this country's experts say. And again, my commentary is that finally this has happened. Uh, China, uh, other of our adversaries, have been scraping so much data and have been using abusing our technology for leverage against us so we're giving them the hammer they're hitting us with it so I'm glad we're finally stepping up to this so chip divider designer Nvidia uh, indicated that it was told to stop exporting uh, two top computing chips for AI work to China and also AMD advanced micro devices also said it received uh, licensing requirements that will stop its advanced chip going over to China uh, and, and quite not surprisingly but kind of tongue-in-cheek it's like yeah Chinese Commerce Ministry opposes these measures of course they would they've been taking and scraping our stuff for years on end and if you look at the trajectory of uh, China from 2025 years ago uh, to now they've made horrendous steps forward they have a lot of brilliant people in uh, China of course but they've also been leveraging our technology uh, to their advantage so uh, this underscores the deepening U.S.-China tensions across uh, the advanced chip technology sector. And if you look at uh, Taiwan, Taiwan right now reportedly produces about 90% of the world's chips. And, uh, you know, we have this whole political issue with Taiwan, China. Is it one China? Is it really two Chinas? 
et cetera. However, the world is at uh, kind of a crux right now, a turning point uh, with uh, the East versus the West. Unfortunately, but that's just the way it is right now. Glad to see this is happening with the AI chips since we're at risk by continually, continually, not going to edit that out, <laughs> uh, um, not securing our own technology. Uh, number two, even at this operating system, Linux isn't safe from hackers. And if you've taken the CEH uh, uh, certification, or if you're taking it now, you use, probably use Linux extensively. If you're in a data center or uh, are a student studying networks and uh, system admin, you're probably focused a little more on Microsoft products, maybe a little bit of Linux products. Uh, now, Trend Micro, uh, um, like many endpoint security software uh, companies, have has their own research arm. Of course, that would make sense if you're in that space to have a research arm to see what, looking forward to see what you can do to develop your own products. Uh, they've noticed a increase from year to year, from last year to this year, of 75% increase of compromise on Linux systems. That's a quite a strong trajectory moving up. Now keep in mind that Linux, uh, in the IT side, provides a lot of server and IT infrastructure software, uh, making it a, an attractive target. Attackers are looking for a soft spot, and the soft spot is that oftentimes Working in IT admin, doing cybersecurity, uh, Microsoft has a great set of tools. Uh, they also provide a good set of um, uh, compliance and risk management uh, concepts and um, even patches to support any vulnerabilities. Um, Linux on the other side, there's so many darn variants out there. And how do you collect all of the patches and vulnerability fixes in an infrastructure? So there's ways to do that. But that being said, IT admin tend to, has a tendency to focus on doing the cybersecurity the patching for the Microsoft products. They're more fully supported in, in a way versus Linux. So uh, the attackers, ransomware folks and out there, uh, are really looking for the soft underbelly uh, to spread spread the wealth, if you will. So uh, in, in particular, I put, put down in this slide, Lockbit, it's one of the most prolific and successful ransomware operations has a Linux variant now. So the bottom line is uh, search for the big bucks. So that's where uh, Linux is becoming the softer target, if you will. Let me adjust my screen just a tad here. I see that I'm cutting it off, not intentionally. Again, uh, next item is police in the UK uh, turn a nav app a ways into uh, a vector against speeders. So what they've been, uh, I don't know if you use Waze, but uh, it's a, a wonderful app. Uh, Google is also doing this as well. But in, on Waze, you can report incidents of, you know, accidents or where police are. So they're turning it in and they're reporting themselves on the Waze apps, uh, hoping to cause users to slow down in certain areas. That's a kind of an indication of turning an app sort of against itself in a way that uh, they're using it for in an unintended way. So there's a, been a lot of users who've been accusing the police of violating Waze's terms of use. I, I kind of chuckle at it because in a way, police are sort of hacking that tool to benefit their own um, ways of ma ways of <laughs> managing uh, speeding. So I kind of chuckle at that. So let me know what you think. Another one, number four, your next PC might come from India. This is actually quite brilliant. We see the separation of East versus West. India is kind of in the middle. And India's Ministry of Four State Electronics and Information Technology released a report this week indicating that they're going to increase electronics production roughly 400% internally and exports by 750% in a short period of time, by 2026 pretty quickly. India is pretty smart in that regard. Um, in a way, and if you look in the 80s, India stopped and they looked at the IT market back then. They realized how robust the IT market was in the US, the UK, and the developing information systems area. So they geared up their educational systems to start offering a, a lot of really high-tech uh, degrees and programs. And if you look at India's educational system, it's quite robust in that area. My hat off to them for doing that in the 80s. Now they're starting to ramp up the production, seeing the opportunity with the division East versus West and offering that up. So 
perhaps your next computer will be from India instead of China. Uh, the export for 2026, again, uh, for electronics is a, a whopping 120 billion, 750% more than the current export numbers. That's quite an aggressive stance. Again, how that uh, refers to cybersecurity, we have to know the source of where our equipment comes from. This would be, an, uh, we're looking at the physical infrastructure. Things are coming in from India. Perhaps they would have a, a unique set of circumstances, vulnerabilities, uh, um, a target, targeting, etc., that we need to look at as well. But I think this offers us an opportunity to kind of steer away from uh, other other suppliers who may have its own risk profile. But then again, that would inter interject another set of risk profiles that we need to be concerned with with India. Again, my hat off to them for uh, uh, looking at this as a good opportunity for the. Uh, uh, folks in India. Number five, powerhouse Italian oil company hit by cyber attack. Now, the Italian oil giant, Eni, was hit by a cyber attack. Uh, it compromised their networks, but the consequences appear to be minor. So the way they had their networks uh, set up, it flagged things. Uh, they shut down certain areas. Uh, and what is, this is kind of good news, by taking a very risk adverse posture, they were able to detect and shut down certain services. So there's a couple of notes in here. Reuters was reported this, so did Bloomberg News. And in a way, if you look at cybersecurity compliance, it was a good thing for uh, Eni to go ahead and do that reporting, not only from a compliance aspect, also to spread the word around. And in really uh, how we do it in cybersecurity, when we do have a compromise, not only do we adhere to the cybersecurity compliance framework that we're using in terms of reporting out because we don't want our reputation to be damaged, but it also is a compliance requirement to do that kind of reporting. In addition, with compliance and also cybersecurity resiliency, really what Eni probably is doing and should do, just as if we were attacked, if we had our own company, we were attacked and we were stopped it, we need to go through all of our cybersecurity compliance and control measures just to make sure that we're not only risk adverse, but we also are very resilient. Because if a, an attacker attacks you from one front and they haven't really su successfully gotten in, you can bet they're going to attack from another front. Uh, by the way, this also speaks to the division of East versus West right now, unfortunately, with the political environment. Uh, but in the bottom note here on my slide, sorry about looking at my screen over here, uh, is a major risk of breaches for utilities and other critical infrastructure, infrastructure items is really certainly on the rise. And it could be leading to a disruption. Let me kind of zip this, do a minus on this here on uh, disruption. We talked about disruption for water services last week, uh, but also electricity, fuel, gas, oil, and other services. So hackers are really uh, getting at to the heart of uh, the infrastructure, not only the defense industrial base, but also the critical infrastructure um, in certain nations as well. We've got to keep that in mind. Now, the next item here. Uh, NASA engineers, number six, execute a software fix from 14 billion miles away. That's kind of cool to think about that. But look at this. This is kind of interesting. Uh, the 45-year-old Voyager 1 probes. Uh, imagine the computers on that. Uh, yeah, so probably fairly basic in terms of what we have for technology. Certainly larger. <laughs> In the, uh, physically heavier and, and probably a lot slower as we can imagine. So uh, in 2022, March of 2022, uh, the telemetry data was obfuscated uh, only because a, a computer uh, stopped working several years ago and the data was being sent to that computer, uh, no response back, and it, it messed with the data stream, the data pool, um, and the telemetry data uh, being sent back to uh, the mission control. Finally, well, from March to a couple of days ago, finally the engineers uh, fixed sent the software fix a few days ago, August 30th, to uh, this, I, I imagine it would, would take a long time sending a data stream up there, fixing and correcting uh, the telemetry uh, data and response, if you will. One indication I do want to highlight is the older technology. 
we do have many other systems, whether it's in banking, uh, the governmental systems, et cetera, that pretty much using a lot of old technology. And it was good in the day, and, and for some purposes, it's still pretty darn good. But back in the day, it was never intended, software was never designed to be security focused, if you will. Now we go through the soft, secure software development process as well as other uh, development process cycles to kind of tighten up things. But there was no real security per se. Uh, we do have a lot of older systems, again, like I had mentioned in banks. The IRS, for example, is still using a lot of COBOL, uh, which was a wonderful language in uh, from the 60s and 70s. And there's been some fixes to COBOL over the the duration of time, but still pretty leaky, uh, pretty noisy in terms of uh, cybersecurity. Uh, we had Fortran uh, later on PL1, kind of leaky code. Uh, we now, and we still use C, uh, C++ uh, as well. So those well, a little more legacy type of coding environments are prone to hacking. I do want to mention this in general. Uh, the software fix probably took them, it looks like it took them four or five months. And of course, the, the hardware on uh, uh, the the hardware on the um, um, Voyager 1 is pretty ancient as well, 45 years old. But it, we still are using that in the environment. So keep that in mind. Everything is not uh, glitzy and brand new and sparkly. Sometimes we have to go back and make certain patches to fix uh, not only items that have failed, but also the software itself uh, may uh, have failed only because the hardware and also the legacy environment is not really dialed into some of the newer requirements. But last but not least, tech exodus. Again, east versus west from Russia continues. And two of the world's biggest 5G makers, uh, Finland, Nokia, and Sweden's Ericsson, side by side, next to Russia, uh, plan to fully exit the Russian market by the end of 2022. Now, the initial uh, restrictions on commerce were sort of kind of held back on uh, uh, the 5G manufacturers only because of the uh, use of uh, technology. They felt that the restrictions on compliance needed to be a little bit looser on 5G because everyone, Russia, uh, the uh, the former Soviet states, were are using some sort of 4G, 5G, if you will. Uh, that's uh, Nokia and uh, Ericsson have decided to bow out by the end of this year. The telecom industry was given an exemption on a wider glo global sanctions on Russia based on the humanitarian grounds, but. Both companies have scaled back, now they're exiting. So uh, bottom line is uh, when that void happens, as it is happening, it's gonna be filled with other vendors like Huey, and that's how I pronounce it, probably wrong, and ZTE, which also is a Chinese vendor uh, as well. Rightfully so, because when a market is present, you wanna jump in as a vendor. Uh, this does speak to the disturbance in the force <laughs> with 5G that's going on. We'll see, we see a lot of continuous uh, exodus from Russia on the tech side as well. And it's going to cause a ripple around the world constantly for the next few years. I hope, Hopefully this conflict will eventually be resolved and settled. I'd like personally not to see the east versus west. It almost feels like we're going back 40 years in many regards. So that's kind of a, a concept there. Uh, again, implications for IT in general and cybersecurity are kind of uh, the underpinning of this item. Next, got the references, the links. I'll post those in the comments. Again, I will do very minor editing on this. This is not intended to be a smooth YouTuber video. I'd have a background if, if I was a YouTuber. This is for information for you to kind of, for all of us to kind of catch up on things that are happening. I hope you enjoyed this. If you will, also please comment, please like, keep in contact as well. I, I'll post my info on, in the comments section. So enjoy your day. Talk soon. Bye now.